have, please interrupt me and um, and let me know, and we'll make sure we get it. So, Dr. Tarun, I have just uh, briefed Alison regarding that. Uh, what will be the crisp agenda for today's forty-five minutes of interaction? Will be towards uh, editing the captured videos, which all the faculty, I think, so they have already in their accounts on the Moodle. So they can mm -hmm. later on uh, try the hands-on with it. So some basic features like how to trim, how to cut a part of the video, how to uh, remove a part of a video or mute and mute it, or how to change the titles of the video, which would be making the uh, video searchable for the student easily. So that these all are the basic things which we are going to cover in today's session. And obviously taking the questions from the faculty directly. Fine, that sounds okay, no sure. Thank you. And Dr. Tarun, with your permission, I, I, I will not be able to sit for the entire uh, session because I'm not feeling well. I'm at my place. And might be able it's to okay. It's it okay. Please take care of yourself. No uh, issue. I will be dropping off uh, after initial 10, 15 minutes. Ms. Harrison, I believe we can start. I already put a message across to all, so people will be coming, and I think it's being recorded also. Satenji, am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so you can start, uh, Alison, please. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you that I, I didn't meet uh, the first time we did a session, my name is Alison Maloney. I'm with Echo360, and I basically manage all of our... Um, academic development. So any kind of interactions with instructors, I catch people's stories, um, I run training, we talk about how best to use um, Echo 360. So today we are going to focus on, and I'm going to just share my screen in just a sec, uh, going to focus on what it is that you've been doing with capturing your lectures and everything. Okay, so hopefully you can uh, see my screen there. Yes, sir. Click flicking. The reason that it's flicking is I'm moving between student and instructor. So if you want to see what something looks like for your students, I can show you that as well. I've opened it in two different browsers. So right now, here I am as an instructor. Now, one of the things that I have done, we, we can talk about how to do it later if, we, if you need to, but I just wanted to show you and just remind you of something else that's possible. So what I've done is I've just embedded a simple video in the beginning of my, um, into my learning management system that actually explains to the students, it welcomes them to my course and explains to them what it is that we're gonna be doing. I've explained to them what this blue button here is because of course that's where your students click to go through to their lectures. And I just wanna show you this to remind you that it's possible. What I have done is I've put a poll in there. So my thinking is that before students even come to my class, let's say it's at the beginning of semester or maybe it's mid through way through semester, I've put a little video in there with a question. Uh, that way I can get started to engage them before they come to my lecture and I can see who's answering and how they're answering. And maybe it gives me a little something else to talk about. So it's just a good way to get students kind of um, involved and into your class before they go into the what we call the course section um, and the other thing that I, you can do here if you embed a, a piece of media is you could have a discussion right so i've just asked a question here that the students would be able to go in to answer now that is not the focus of what we're doing today but i wanted to just show you that it was there 
in case you wanted to take what you're doing with Echo 360 and Echo Video to that next step. And I'm always happy to meet with anybody one-on-one -on -one who wants a bit more information. So basically, I just did this video that says to my student, hey, um, if you click up on that button, that is how you're going to access all of your lectures. So you, this is what you'd be very familiar with, right? The students click on, this is the core, what we call the course section. This is where all of the recordings go and then the students can watch them. Now I'm actually in here as a student. And so I can see what the instructor has put up for me. So you can see here this week one, there's a video and it's green, which means I haven't watched it yet. So I get to watch that. That's the recording from my first class. This week two one has this little um, presentation icon next to week two. That means that the recording hasn't happened yet, but what the instructor has done is uploaded their slides for me. So I can look at the slides before we start the class, or I could maybe even open them up and use them while we're teaching, while you're teaching. So I've got notes. So as you're talking to me, as my teacher, I can take notes next to the slides. Right, and it's going to allow me then through my slides next to the note taking. And once the lecture has been recorded, I'll have the recording and the slides side by side that I can use. So it allows me to take notes um, and to also ask questions if it's been turned on. And to, you know, if there's something that I think, wow, I really wanna come back to this, I can bookmark that as well. So that's kind of um, how I'm working through that as a student. Let's just come back to that student view. And then week three is blacked out because there isn't anything there yet. So I've still got this lecture to watch from week one. Week two, which is coming up, I've got my slides that I can use while you're teaching. And then week three, I've got nothing yet. Um, and here I just put some different examples in just, just in case we needed them a little bit later. Okay, now let's go in as the instructor. Here I am in the instructor. And I've, you'll see, I obviously I see exactly the same thing, but I've got a few more buttons here. So week one, there's my lecture that I've already had recorded. Week two, there's the slides that I've uploaded and you'll see next to it is the grayed out um, presentation. That means that there is a recording gonna happen and be uploaded there automatically. So you'll have noticed that when you look at your, um, course section like this, you will notice that you've got little grayed out boxes. That is where your recording is going to come in or has been coming in. So I'm sure you're very familiar with that. Um, now let's say we are, I'm going into week one and I know there was something in that that I don't want left into the recording, right? Sometimes um, students want to discuss something that's a little bit private um, or we had a break, whatever it is, maybe there's something that I want to edit. So right from in here in that course section, I can click on edit video. And that is going to open up our video editor. So you, you can go in exactly the way that students do. You go straight into your course section, you see your lecture that's been captured and you can edit it. So let's say I said, actually, you know, that first bit was just me chatting with a student. So I'm gonna, and I just use these pink handles. That's the end. I just use those pink handles to trim it, right? To top and tail the video. But the, as I said before, maybe there was something in the middle. Now there isn't anything, but let me just play this one just, right? Maybe it was this bit that I decided actually there was a conversation happening that um, wasn't right. So here I've got, now my video is a bit, close together. So I've got these plus and minus buttons here that is going to allow me to focus my cursor in and go it was right there in that space. That's the bit that I want to cut. Um, and so there's this little hamburger menu on the top of my blue cutter. And if I click on that, it allows me to split the clip. And then I can drag it to the next bit that I wanted out. Split the clip. And now which has the pink handle around it, then 
the middle bit that I want to get rid of. Now, I talk about the pink handle because it's really easy to cut and find your pink handle over on this end bit and want to delete the middle bit. And so what you end up doing accidentally, let me just get rid of this. It seems to have gotten my way. Zoom, right? The controls are always in my way. What um, can happen is you go here, you don't realize that your handle's around the end bit and you delete it. Ah, that's not the bit I wanted. So the great news here is I can just click undo. If for some reason I did accidentally save it, there is also this grayed out restored to original because I haven't saved it, there's no reason to restore. But had I saved it, I could always restore my videos to original. So you never have to be scared. It is absolutely non-destructive non-destructive um, system. So this was the bit I wanted to cut out, but there we go. Now, you will see gaps here. One of the instincts that we've learned from using lots of different editors is that we want to close that gap, right? Because if you use iMovie or Camtasia, one of the other editors, you know that you just move the media to close the gap. Echo Video Editor does not work that way. The editor will do it for you. So if there's any gaps, just leave them, right? They, the editor will close it up. See, like we had this one at the beginning um, and then we've got that one. But also, actually got an introduction or I've got something else that I wanted to put in, I can insert another clip from my library and it will bring up this. This is going to bring up every piece of media that I have ever created and put into my library. So it'll have all of your past lectures. It'll have any little pieces that you might have uploaded. And we're just going to put that one there. Oops, something went wrong. A report error has been sent. So maybe our editor is having a bit of a... um a bit of a moment at the moment. Let's go back. Let's see. So up the top here, I don't know if you've noticed this when you've gone into your course section, let's just go back there. Oh, hang on, I don't know where I am. Let me go back here, to get back in. At the top, you'll see you've got this library courses collection, so you can always go to your library, and that is where all of your recordings will be, right? So that's the one I showed you that had that poll in it for students with the check, and that's the the my original video, and the one that I did, which I was just editing. Let's see, doing it for everything. Maybe Echo 360 is having a moment. Oh, no, there we go. There it is. You can, in fact, add that new media by clicking this and inserting my clip. Ah, oh, there we go. Now it's there. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to ask me, do I want the, um, bit, the, the picture and the audio from that other movie? video or do I just want the video or do I just want the audio? Well, I am going to insert it and there it is now at the beginning. So again, as I said, any gaps, you're, they're just going to close up when I click save. So that's kind of a, a really important thing to know there. Um, so you can add a piece to your video or you can just cut pieces out. That's absolutely up to you. And then over here we have a save button. And if I save it as it is, because I went to edit it from that course section, it will change it in the course section as well. Now, if I want them to have different options, then I can actually save it as a new video. See here, save as, but we're gonna save it as it, as it was. And then it's gonna process, we go back to the library and we will see our, see our video here is processing. It's just making those changes for me. And then if I go back to my, let's go to my dashboard. To get back to the course, I wanna make sure I go to the right place.
So it's here, edited and ready for students to play and to use. So that's how our editor works. Are there any questions that I can answer for you about the editor? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Professor Patra. Thanks. That's a wonderful start to the session, uh, Alison. Uh, I have a bunch of questions here. I'm going to uh, fire them away. You can choose to answer some of them now and leave the others for later. Sure. Um, may I start? Yes, please. Good. Um, in real time recording, when I am actually delivering the lecture, do I have something at my disposal that will allow me to pause and start the recording? Yes, um, it depends how your room is set up. That might actually be a better one for um, one of your technical people to, are you, are you recording from your own computer or from a computer that's in your lecture room? No, I'm using my own laptop. I'm just connecting it to a smart board uh, in the lecture hall. Okay. No, and are uh, you Dr. using the- uh, Alison, uh, let me answer yes. that. So, uh, Dr. Patra, the recording is being done from the desktop desktop computer, which has been fit into every classroom. So, the automatic class recorder has been set up on those machines. I see. I see. So, I can't use my own laptop for these sessions, right? No. For class recordings, uh, it has been set up on the classroom desktop. But okay. if, you want, if you wish to create your own video recordings, like flip videos or any other contents, you mm -hmm. can have personal record. That's clear. And all yeah. those all those media created with your private uh, editor or the video recorder application will go to your section in the library, which you can see it over here. I see. Very clear. Uh, sorry, I stand corrected, Alison. The question then is about uh, recording system that has been set up in the class uh, computer system. Mm -hmm. So then that again, that is not one for me. That's for the team there to answer because I don't know how it's been set up so it could have been set up with a button that we do have these buttons that you can press to record it might be that you have to press something on your desktop to pause but the capability is definitely there it's just without seeing it I can't tell you what you do because I don't know how yours has been set up but maybe um, Suresh you could answer that or Ahmed somebody who's been involved in that Yes. So, uh, Dr. Pasar, the question is regarding to the classroom recordings, which we are doing. Yes, the using the classroom computer. So, at presently, it does not have any pause control in the classroom with the faculty, but we do have the control that all the recordings comes to your courses, and then you can remove the part which you wish, like Alison was trying, trying to tell the cutting the videos into pieces and deleting them as per the wish. Okay, I get it. So, but obviously, uh, that, that arrangement, some... obviously, that arrangement for pausing and starting and that can be done within the classroom. That's not an issue. Oh, great. That's precisely what I was about to ask. Thanks for answering that proactively. I appreciate that. The next one, therefore, is when we are doing the editing, as you just demonstrated, Alison, uh, you know, hand... sections. Huh? <clears throat> uh, it's a tedious task, a certain one. So, I was trying to fix it in Word uh, by having a provision of pausing it in the session, for example, but till such time we don't have that. And as Sorezji mentioned, we have to go and uh, fix it in the editing on the editing table. Um, it's a tedious task to locate the precise point from where until where I'd want to truncate it or nip it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I do. So, uh, what handles do I have to identify at exact position? Because I can't be delivering a section and taking notes that Okay, here is a three minute section that I want to delete mm -hmm. on the editing table after my class and uh -huh. I keep recording those. I'm concentrating on my class, right? How do I locate yep. those sections which I eventually want to delete? I totally understand. Hang on a minute as a student. I think then there's no, because because there's no way of our system to know what, what you want to delete. Um, mm -hmm. That's very difficult. But what I do is I will actually deliberately mm -hmm. pause. So if I know that something, again, there's something went wrong. I'm so sorry. I don't know if it's the system or, or what it is. Let's go into my library. Um, if I want to, edit my media. If I know there's, I've just made a mistake or there's a piece, then I would make sure that actually there is a, um, like a blank, space here so that you can actually see that when you um, narrow into it you can see where nobody's been speaking and then that will help you to identify the part 
I can't think of any do it um, because I hear what you're saying. If you've done a two hour lecture and you have to go mm -hmm. through and delete the bits you don't want, how do you know where they are? Yeah, I probably spent two and a half hours locating uh, those bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, you, know what I mean? you could, let me just see if you have them. Do you, I can't remember off the top of my head. Do you have transcripts? No, that was in fact one of my questions later in the Yeah, because that's what I often use as well. But transcript, to... transcript is enabled in the system. They yes. So that's the other way is if you come into your library, one of the yeah. editors that you have in here is this transcript editor. Mm -hmm. So what you could do is just is search for the word. So let's mm -hmm. say my word was submit. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know that the, what time it's at. Yeah. And then you can jot them down. Unfortunately, it's a different editor to the actual editor because this is where you can correct your transcript. But yeah. maybe you don't want to correct the transcript. You just want to find some places. You could Indeed. use this to get the timestamps and then go back to the other editor and cut them. I know right. that's not ideal, but that's the mm -hmm. only way that I can think of right now that I, that's how I do it when I'm cutting because oftentimes I'll do a Wait, long So this, this is workable, yep. I think. But this transcript thing is basically a real-time NLP capture. I'm sorry, say that again. Is it? Is this transcript section, is it captured real time based on NLP? It is processes. It, it probably comes. So once your recording has processed, the transcript will come just after it. So say an hour afterwards. It depends how long you talk. will depend how long the transcript takes. Okay. But it will do it automatically after a certain oh, yes. amount of time of processing. Yes. Absolutely. So once you, anything that goes into your course section, any of your mm -hmm. lectures, it'll go in there, it'll automatically be transcribed. So you can go mm -hmm. in and find those pieces. Excellent. Absolutely. That's great. So that tackles two other questions. You, yeah. dis, you did demonstrate how one could uh, edit pieces out and then had you gone wrong, you have the option of restore to original. That's lovely. Um, what if I have made a dozen changes and I want to redo only a few of them is there a list of edited pieces somewhere or must you, it always go back to the original all of it gone no if i say so this one that i edited i think this is the one i edited mm -hmm. so i go to my um editor here let's mm -hmm. see if there's any editing let me just have oh this is not one i edited sorry let me find one what i want to show you is that any edits you make mm -hmm will sh always show in your video, even though you've saved it. Okay. So you'll always be able to see because the what happens is the media editor just plays over that. I keep going back to this one that got that went wrong, but that's because I know that's a video that I edited. So I've just got a bad habit of going there. Does that make sense what I'm trying to tell you? So if yeah, you've edited, yeah, if you've edited, so mm -hmm. I've edited my, my lecture and I've made 12 cuts mm -hmm. yeah. and then I, back to it but I only want to I want to get rid of two or I want to keep two when yes. I go back into my editor I will still see all the original cuts I I made it's just that when the the um video player plays it it plays over those cuts so you always I can have selectively undo over. any one of those cuts I'm sorry yes. to speak over. yes yeah yep. great okay the very last question for this yes. piece yet and you can tell me that I'm ahead of the class here um, does this tool provide for uh, inserting a second screen along with the original video? So when I play it back to students, when they're watching it at home, they're able to see an additional piece of information on the same screen along with the video playing on one half of the screen? Um, only if you capture, well, yes, basically, yes. Let's go okay. back to our, um, this is all to do with the editor. So these are great questions. That's not nothing that you have, we have to wait for. Let's just go back here. Sorry, I'm just not used to using this LMS, so I'm a little bit wonky, but um, so let's say here is my, this is the one I've got, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I happen to have captured my slides mm -hmm. and my video here, right? It's not showing right now. It might be just a little bit of internet connection. But if I go to edit it, mm -hmm. It's going to allow me to add and remove tracks. Okay. So maybe it's that you went, well, I don't want that one. Yeah. I want to add something else. 
So you can actually then add here uh, under actions, mm -hmm. it will let you add a track. So you could add something else that you wanted that will play. Concomitantly. Yep, it will play along with it. Got it. That's Excellent. Okay Thank you very much. Yep. So then you'll you'll see those other ones. Um, honestly, the easiest thing to do is just to capture both things at once because the the capture the machine can take two um, pieces. It can record content on your screen and it can record your face, or you could have a camera on something else. Like you could have a camera on the whiteboard and capture everything on your desktop. Uh, it's really just about how you set it up. So it might be easier to try to use the two cameras to start with. But again, yeah, what if I wanted to add another piece of video which is relevant to that section that I've covered on my slides? So the a second track could be another piece of media, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Wait. The only thing that you can't add another one of is um, audio. So you, there's only one audio track. Like sometimes oh. people ask me, can you put music underneath it? And it's like, no. But plus for learning, you probably don't want to anyway. But no, there's you can remove the one audio track and replace it, or you can add a second visual track. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Great questions. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So that's our video editor. So we've got our video here. But I just want to show you that there's lots of things that you can do with it as well as that. Now, I'm to the editor now in my library, but I could also do it by dropping down on the video in my class. So just wanted to show you there's a couple of different places to get this menu. The other place is just clicking on it and there's a menu there. So there are three places to access the menu. From the course section where the class is listed, just click on the little icon from the library or by double clicking in the library and here it is here. So I just showed you the editor transcript um, that you could also add a poll. So remember that video I showed you at the start, maybe you want to add a poll, your, um, your lectures come back, you've edited out the bits you don't want and you think just to make sure the students are actually paying attention and not just turning on my video and walking away or to see what they're doing in their study, there is this editor here. So we have three editors, the video editor, the transcript editor, and the third one here is the poll editor. This is where I can add that poll. So I just drag to where I want the poll to go. So I want it here. And then any poll that I've ever created that's in my library, I'll have here. So I can just say, choose this one and go, yep, I want that one. And there it is. So, you know, sometimes there are questions that you ask students and you tend to ask them quite regularly. That's where this helps because you could just, it's in already, don't even have to worry about it. But let's say I wanted to create one, click on create a poll. There's five different polls. I could do an image quiz, numerical short answer. Um, because we're short on time, I'm only going to do the short answer because it's, it's um, quite quick. I can decide where I want it at 10 seconds or change it if I want to. Um, just use that one. And I can also use feedback. So, so when the students answer, they get some feedback in their video. Again, I know you're teaching live. And so these um, videos would be used more for students studying, but it doesn't mean that they, this might not be useful to them if, if they actually had that. So just wanted to show you that that was there, that you actually can add polls to videos. Then once that's done, there's this second little library here. And this is going to show you what the two polls are in that video um, and enable you to edit them if you wanted to, if you wanted to move them around. But this now, as soon as I click save, when we go back to the library, what you'll see is a few seconds ago, I created a piece of interactive media. Right, this was my original one down here, this welcome one here, which has the little player button to say it's a video. This one has a check mark, and that means that it actually has some questions inside it. So you could use that and then share that to your class. So I can do it right here. 
I don't know. I think that's the one we're using, but I'm not really sure. I could create a new class. And it will go into my course. Uh, see down here, I've got new. That's what I just created. And I've just shared it now with the students in the course. Now, let's say I wanted to just take a little bit my lecture and I wanted my students to see it in my learning management system, maybe when they go to the next class. That's what I was, I had done before. I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to do it. I know it's not the major focus of what we're doing here today. So I don't want to spend too long on it, but I do like to show you that it's possible. Get back to the LMS. You just click on home, yes. Thank you. Uh, there we go. All right. So this is where I actually might want to have it show so I can turn my editing on. And let's say I'm going to put it in here just for to make it easier. I can add an activity. I'm going to add a label. Um, I'm going to say study piece for you. And then I'm going to click on the blue button. That's what we call it, easy embed. And again, it's going to pull all my media up from my library, anything that I have created. I'm going to look at the date it was created. And that's the piece I just did. And I'm going to place it into there. And there's that video in my LMS. So again, right there, if you create things in your library, you can share it to your course section or you could embed it directly into the learning management page. So you've, you've had a lecture, maybe there was a 15 minute piece that all the students seem to be confused about. Perhaps you go in and you cut that bit out and then you can embed it right into your learning management system. But as we know, most of what you're doing will be recording and sending it into this course section. A Couple of other things to do with the course section that I just wanna make sure that I show you. Um, you have analytics here. So this will enable you to have a look and see how many students were looking at what for each week. If you had any polls that you were doing live, it will tell you um, how they responded. If you wanted to go and have a look at individual students and see whether the individual students had been going in and looking at the video, you can find that. So there's a lot of information there. Um, there's a discussion tool. There's actually um, some feedback on discussion. Um, and then these things, it's just worth clicking around and playing around um, to find out what it is that you want to do. I'm sure a lot of this um, settings information will be managed for you at the administrative level. And so you won't really have to worry about it. Um, except the one thing I will show you that I think people find really handy is this um, question and answer. So next to every one of your recordings or in every one of your recordings, as we just saw, there's a discussion piece where students can ask and answer questions. Sometimes you might not want that. You might be like, I actually don't want the students asking questions while I'm teaching because I don't have time to answer them. Or maybe it's something really technical and you don't want other students giving wrong information. You can actually turn it off. You can't turn yours off, I'm sorry. Just tried to show you something that I think has been dis has not been enabled. It doesn't look like you actually have that ability. I apologize for that. Um, okay, any questions from here? Um, Cause I've got a couple of other things I wanna show you before we finish up. One of the things that I, other things I wanted to show you. So as you know, Right, I'll just go back to the beginning so that we're all on the same page. This is where your students go. 
they see their recordings. If you put up slides to use while you're teaching, they'll see the slides next to the recording. They can take notes. But you could also, if you had a little bunch of videos that you wanted to share with students, but you didn't want it to get caught up in your week two, week three, what I've done here is I have actually created a little group, right? New class group. So this blue button that says new class group, um, just gonna call it um, study. Maybe there's some little pieces that you wanted students to have access to for when they're studying for an exam. So I've now got this little um, group called study. And if I reorder, what I can say is that's worth re-watching. That one's worth re-watching. That one's worth re-watching. And then I save it. Right. And so then my students, when they come into the course section, they've got all this information from, you know, 12 weeks, every single one that they could go back and look at but you've also selected certain pieces for them that they know are gonna give them the key pieces for studying. So I just wanted to show you and make sure that you were aware that was there, that if you wanted to pull pieces together for students, you could do that. The other way you can do it, and this is a way that you could do it even to work with each other, up the top in your menu, you have collections. And collections is a way that you can group videos together that may aren't part of a class or a section. Maybe you have a series of guest speakers. Maybe you've got some um, video or some pieces of information that another lecturer has given. Um, maybe you've just got some study tips. I don't know what it is. It might be that you've got some extra polling questions. They can all go into this collection. So they just sit like that and then the students access it. Um, and then what you can do is you can add your students to it. But so that you don't have to spend a lot of time typing out all your students' names, there's this link down the bottom here. So if I enable that and then I copy it, right? And then somewhere in here, I add a link, 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 link. That one. Right, um, there it is there. Okay, so students can click on that. If I go in now as my student self, let's go back. There it is, I'm now a student. When I click on that, it not only does it show me the collection of videos, what it's done is it's enrolled me. So that's an auto enroll that you can do. That's Alta Maloney student members and it's to be able to access that collection or um, work within a collection of videos, you just make that auto, auto enroll, they click on it in the LMS and all of a sudden they've got access to any video that you put in there. And so let's say somebody shares a video with you that you think would be um, really useful. Then you can, I um, can't find the add media button. Again, it might be that I am in as a student. So students can't, they can't add media, they can't delete media, they can't play around in there in the same way that um, we can as an instructor. So I'll just go back. So that's that collection. There it was. And now I've got this add media button. So let's say I've, someone shared something with me in my library. I can add it into that collection, and now it's going to be available for those students via that link. So it's just another way that you can share media with your students while you're using this course. But your greatest use of it is going to be this, as you know, what you're doing right now, the um, actual lecture with the course section, 
And if you want to add your videos, so let's say, um, sorry, your slides, let's go back here, week three, that's grayed out. I want to add my slides so that my students um, can watch them while I'm teaching. I can upload them from my desktop, or if I've got some in my library, I can put them in my library. But let's say I'm going to add them from my desktop. And there's the slides there. So as soon as those slides are just processing, as soon as they've processed, then you'll be able to view them. And again, if you wanted to add a poll, you would open it up and you could edit the presentation by adding a poll. And again, it's those five polls that we could put into the interactive media. So a multiple choice question, a short answer, an image poll, the list or the numerical quiz are all available, whether you put them into a slide that your students can use while you're teaching. They just go into their Echo 360 section and watch the slides while you're talking. Or you could put one of those same polls into the recording after it's finished and share that back with students. So that's very much um, what is available to you. And one of the things that I think I would encourage you to do as well as editing your media, which is obviously very important, but think about uploading your slides into Echo 360 so that they are available for students while you're finished teaching and that your recording comes into your class, they get that full experience where they actually have the video, right? And they have the slides as well. And so now this means that when they go to put in, sorry, not questions, I'm in the wrong one. I was in as an instructor, let me just go back into the class as a student, this was the one. So now when I come in here as a student, I've got the video of me and whatever I'm showing on my screen. I've also got the slides that I can click through individually. And when I take notes now, remember how before we had notes against slides? Now I've also got it against the video. So while I'm studying, I come to here, take another note. Oh, my typing's terrible today. And look, it's got the time. So it will take me back to that part of the video um, as a student. So I've had a two hour lecture, exactly like we were talking about before. Students don't wanna have to rewatch two hours, but they wanna go to certain places they can bookmark it and go to that, that will take them to that particular pace and it moves backwards and forwards. So that's the thing I really encourage. Script. So they can search through for particular words as well. They remembered that you were talking about cars on Rottnest Island. So they search for it. There's three results. They can click through and find them. And then when they click play, it will play them from that particular part of the video. So giving them access to this classroom with the transcript and maybe the slides is, is really a worthwhile venture. So we're at uh, 45 minutes, so um, I will stop there. Now, um, please, um, I hope you have my contact details. It's simply amaloney at echo360.com. If you don't, you can get them. Um, if you have any other questions or you wanted a, just a little one-on-one -on -one session, you want me to show you how to do anything, please don't hesitate to ask. But uh, that's our 45 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Taran. Thank you, Alison. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone has anything to ask or query or some discussion, please feel free to come in.
Fine, I believe uh, question which was asked in between have already solved the purpose looks to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, honestly, as you get questions, as people try it, as they do things, please don't hesitate. You can always just email, collect the questions up and send them through. I'm really happy to answer them at any time or we can make another meeting. That's fine. Fine, Th that would be quite help. No issue. Mm -hmm. so we have the email. Yep. If somebody has it, obviously it can be circulated to you. Absolutely. Yeah, just wanted to know which time zone are you operating from uh, so we can uh, align that. Oh, yes. Luckily, I'm not too far away. I'm in Perth. I'm on the West Coast. So yeah, just you, you are two and a half hours behind. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. It's, so, um, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank, so you, thank you so Thanks much for your time, brother. Thank Thanks. you so much, Alison. And all uh, just for the information, all the any any issue or any handholding is required. I am available at any time, so Brilliant. you can directly approach me with any of your queries, any questions, any problem you are facing, either in the recordings, your personal tribute recordings, your writings, or any other thing. Thank you, Sarah yeah. That's really reassuring. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Soreji. Thank, uh, thank you for making it uh, happen, making it arrange. Thanks, Alison, for your time. And uh, thanks, Satyanji, for your IT support. Satyanji, you are requested to circulate the recording of this also to everybody so that we can revisit it if anybody wants to. Sure, sir. Sure, I will do it. Uh, I think so. Uh, just one thing is left over, Alison, if you can showcase that how the, how the title of a particular media can be renamed. So if you can show oh, yeah. that to the entire group. Sorry. Yep. So edit, just editing may, the thing which we have seen in the editing is that how the content of the media can be changed or edited. Uh, and if you can yeah, showcase yeah. how the details and the titles for the videos can be changed. Of or course. Edited. Let me just quickly show you that. That's all. You'll find that very easy to do. So when you, let me just make sure I'm in as an instructor, not as a student. Okay, so you can, uh, again, you can do it from here. It's got details and edit details. And that will allow you to change the name of your piece of media. Just right there, you can give it a description if you want to. Um, I'm going to leave that there because I need to know what it's called. Actually, no, I don't. Let's just change it. Maybe I just want it to be called Zoom Demo save um, and then that will change the name of it there if you in your library and you want to change your name of anything here again you go to view it will give you the opportunity to edit the details and you can change the name it is all very simple. So one of the things that you will learn is if you spend a little bit of time in the library, you just click on this drop down and you just click them, you'll see what it is that you can do. And it's really quite um, straightforward. But that's, yeah, that's how easy it is to change the details of your piece. You can also make a copy just by clicking a button. Right. And the copy of the media will appear in your library. You might want to do that if you're making a collection that you want to share with other people and you want to keep your original. Sometimes that's quite handy to make a copy of something before you send it on to somebody else. But they're the they're those basics. Anything else that I might have missed? No, it's okay. Brilliant. Thank you, so Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you, Dr. Tarun. Thank you all, all the faculty. Thank colleagues. you. Thank, thank you. you and, uh, thank you, Amit Kumarji. Thanks. And thanks to all my uh, faculty colleagues for taking your time out to listening to Alison. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank thanks you very everyone. much, everyone. Good day. Bye-bye. Bye, Alison. -bye. Bye.